Hello and welcome. So in this video or other video series, we are going to build a simple form of a neural network in Python. This video or series is based on the introductory example in the book Machine Learning and Finance from Janis Klaas, which I will link in the video description. I have opened up two additional resources here, which will help you to get a better understanding of what we are doing in each of the steps. So we have weights and bias in a neural network from Satya Ganesh and also cross entropy loss function from, I won't try to pronounce it that name, I'm sorry. So first of all, we are starting with the infrastructure and we are taking the infrastructure as shown here. So we have an input matrix of our features and we also have a weights matrix here. The weights are just the importance each of those features have. And we are summing them up. So what does that mean? We are just taking the dot product here of the input matrix and the weight matrix. And after we've done that, we are adding the bias. So why do we add the bias? That's pretty nicely explained in the article here. So we are just shifting the activation function. You will find that somewhere uh, below here. All right. And after we have done that, we are feeding this to the activation function, which is a sigmoid function in our case. So we are doing a logistic regression here or using a logistic regression. When we have fed that to our activation function, we are getting a predicted y value. So first of all, let's start with defining some of the stuff I just mentioned. So first of all, we need to import NumPy. And I'm just taking the input matrix as the author was using in this book. So these are just random values for our input um, values here. And as you see, we have three X, so three columns here and four data points, right? So this is just a matrix containing the input values. We also need the actual values. So based on, I don't know, historical observations, past data. So this is the desired output. So in the best case, that should be the uh, results of feeding that X into our neural network. So if we're getting zero, one, one, zero here, the network has done a good job. Okay, now let's start with the weights. And for that, we are using the random function from NumPy. This function has certain parameters to create random variables. So for creating random variables, you have a mean and you have a standard deviation. And the standard parameters for this uh, random function is a mean of 0 0.5 and a standard deviation of 0 0.5. So when we want to create random numbers, we are usually taking a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So we have to do something to this randomizing function here, right? And that is just, so I'm going to show you, two times 0 0.5 minus one is zero. So we are just taking this, these randomized number times two and then subtract the one to achieve getting a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Okay, so important is to have the same shape as our input matrix. And as you just saw, we have three inputs here, so three columns, so we need a three times one um, weight matrix. So two times that minus one, and we have defined our initial weights. So what's also recommended is to set a seed here so that we are getting the same random numbers. I'm not doing that here, but I just want to say it's recommended to do that. Next up, we are defining the bias and we are defining the bias as zero, which is a common way to start um, defining the parameters of the neural network. There are other possibilities, but we are taking a zero here. And now we are doing the summation part. So we are taking the dot products out of X and W, right? So this was this part here. And we just need to add the bias after that. So plus B. And the result of that, we are just calling Z, right? So you won't find that in this, this year, but just imagine this. So this one plus this one is Z. And this Z, we are feeding to our activation function. 
and I'm taking a sigmoid function, which is also, by the way, explained in within this article here. So the sigmoid function is just translating values to values between 0 and 1. So the sigmoid function is defined, so we can just uh, use the formal definition, 1 divided by 1 plus uh, exp of minus x. And to this sigmoid function, we are feeding our z. And then we are getting an array like that, right? So again, this is our predicted y. So you can call that y hat or whatsoever. I'm calling that a. This is just the notation the, the author was using. I'm sticking to that. But this is just our predicted y values. So from now on, I'm taking a for our predicted y values. All right. And now we can take a look at that and also take a look at y. And you see that our prediction is not anywhere close to our actual values, right? So this, this is our desired output and this is our actual output. And we need to find a metric to evaluate the difference between the actual values and the predicted values. And for taking a binary classi classifier as we are taking here, the most common metric is the binary cross entropy loss. So have a read to, um, through this article here. It's explained very well. I will link that in the video description. So we are using the binary cross entropy loss here to calculate the error or loss uh, from this prediction model. So let me quickly copy paste the formal definition of the cross entropy loss or binary cross entropy loss when we are taking a look at a single data point. So we have two parameters here, right? So our actual y and our predicted y. So we are just multiplying the actual y with the log of the predicted y. And here we are just taking one minus y and then take the log of one minus a. So how can we understand this function? So we could also rewrite this function and you will find that often when taking a look at cross entropy loss. And this function is defined for y being one, only this part, right? Because imagine y is one. If y is one, this part of the equation is, is being canceled out, right? So one minus one, zero, and then this part uh, is gone. All right, so this is only for one data point, but as you saw, we have one, two, three, four data points, right? So let me just pull the equation for multiple data points. This is just taking the cross entropy loss and averaging that over all data points. So you will see that right now. So here you see we're getting one divided by n. So in our case, one divided by four and then the sum. So we are just simply taking the mean out of all the cross entropy losses here. So let's formalize that into a function, which I'm just calling loss here. And this function is taking y and y hat. So y actual values and y hat predicted values out of the model. So first of all, we define our n and our n is just equal to the length of y, which is four. And then we are defining the loss and I'm just taking this function here and write that into code. So one divided by n times uh, y times the log of y hat plus one minus y times the log of one minus y hat. After that, I'm summing that up and then I'm dividing that by minus n. And we are returning the loss out of this function. So if I wanna know how good this model has performed, I'm calling the loss and provide my actual values and my predicted values A. And with that, I'm getting a pretty high loss value. So the desired 
value is close to zero, right? By the way, you don't have to program that. There are packages which are calculating that. So for example, sklearn has um, log loss. So we can also uh, compare that to, to the log loss function from sklearn. You see we're getting the same loss here. So everything went better than expected. So you see we have a pretty high loss with this model. So we need to optimize it. And we are optimizing this model by minimizing this cross entropy loss function using gradient descent and we're using backpropagation for parameter updates. So this is what I will cover in the upcoming video. So if you're interested in that, leave it a like. Thank you very much for watching.